think Johnny Green is standing in here, but I went and looked a few minutes ago. And um, as uh, Scott said earlier, I came here about 12 years ago in 2010 to become the executive director here. And the Cahoma County Higher Education Center and the Teacher Mansion was kind of at a turning point. Uh, um, weren't really sure what we were going to do. And it has really been uh, like pushing a rock uphill. <laughs> but I finally feel like that we're starting to get some traction and, some, and to make some progress. And, and, and this group being here today is just one, of, one part of that, I think. Uh, but I went and looked and I found back in uh, 2013, uh, John Green and Lynn Wu uh, helped us put together a strategic planning document that really took us through these ideas that we're starting to have and promote here at the Higher Ed Center. I mean, like educational conferences. You know, that really wasn't happening before we got this strategic planning uh, done because the original purpose, when, uh, let me give you a quick snippet of the house. Uh, the house was built in 1916 by the Cutrera family. Uh, after Mr. and Mrs. Cutrera died in the 30s, there's about 10 years that we're not really sure what happened. Uh, but then in 1947, the Catholic Church purchased the property and it became a convent for the nuns. So if you walk out on the property, you'll see the, uh, the grotto, the Catholic grotto that tells the story of St. Bernadette uh, and the, uh, the Blessed Mother Mary. So that's out there and that is a, a direct uh, remembrance of the Catholic Church when they were here. The Catholic Church was here for 50 plus years from 1947 to about 2000. Uh, and at that time they decided they wanted to build uh, their school. This became a Catholic school. They turned it into a Catholic school. They wanted to build their elementary school uh, next door to their church, which is right behind uh, the little mill creek behind us on Florence Saturday. And so you can imagine, first of all, this location and this house being a uh, educational facil facility for uh, over 50 years, how many people came through this property and how many people really love this property. And so uh, it was a real tough decision on what to do with it and what to make out of it. And uh, one of the people that, I'll probably mention her name several times today, but in that particular battle, if you will, of trying to save the mansion um, was Penny Mayfield. She ran a literally a grassroots campaign to save the mansion. Uh, and then that in turn brought in other funders and stakeholders to help uh, raise the funds that we needed. John Levinson being one of them, he spoke this morning, so y'all heard it. Uh, he was involved as well in helping raise those funds. Uh, and the, um, the community raised $750,000 to purchase the property from the Catholic Church. And then they went on to go into a partnership with Delta State University and Cahoma Community College. Uh, Keith Fulcher was here earlier, and he was one of the ones, as John mentioned earlier, who really he worked at Delta State at the time and helped fundraise for the uh, to save the property. And then uh, uh, they wanted to turn it into a higher education center. And years went by, government moved slow. I left one thing, and I did leave one thing out. The county gave 2.5 million to the project. And my my husband, who's a county supervisor, was on that uh, project then and was uh, instrumental in helping with that. And then the state gave 2.5 million to the project. So the point I'm trying to make is that there's a lot of investment in this center, and it's been extremely slow trying to get it up off the ground. But uh, today, I can honestly come to you and say that I think we're finally getting off the ground. And uh, organizations like this, the Delta Directions Group, coming here every year for about eight years, nine years, I don't know, Lynn, you know better than I do probably, uh, to do conferences like this that brings young people like all of you here to learn about the Delta and to get together and problem solve and to go out into other communities like Mount Bio and Marks and uh, Jonestown and um, whatever other communities you are visiting. I know those three for sure. But it's a work with the people there and try to help them figure out what they need to do. So anyway, um, I wanted to kind of give you a quick history of the house and the quick history of the investment that's been on this property. And so uh, 
The other thing that's been going on a lot here over the years, this has been a central location, is the Mississippi Delta Tennessee Williams Festival. Uh, also, again, uh, Penny Mayfield was the, one of the key uh, founders of the Tennessee Williams Festival and keeping it going. This year's gonna be 30 years for the festival. Cajon Community College has been a sponsor since the beginning. Since uh, 1992, uh, we've got the, they got the first planning grant to operate the Tennessee Williams Festival, and uh, and really that has been the the cultural tourism issue that we're talking about today, and the cultural st storytelling. Uh, when I came on board 12 years ago, I'm talking fast because I want to make sure I have for everybody. <laughs> but when I came on board 12 years ago, uh, the education for credit classes had sort of started dissipating. People weren't interested. I couldn't get the faculty at that state and CCC really to get on board with it. So we, we sort of developed a cultural uh, educational program, you know, how we can make it do it. And one of the most successful was a partnership with the Carnegie Public Library to do a uh, author lecture series. And that one has been going on for about nine years now. We, COVID kind of put a, a halt and brakes on it, uh, temporarily, I hope. But we've had almost 50 authors come to town, national authors, including uh, uh, Nikki Giovanni was our first one. Scott and I were talking about that today. He said, I couldn't get in the building. <laughs> it wasn't large enough. So, uh, but she was fantastic. I mean, uh, I know many of you are familiar with her work, and if you're not, you should look her up. And she's been around a long time and has done an amazing job uh, with her poetry and all of her um, activism over the years. And uh, we've had Carolyn Kennedy. That was another huge one. We had that outside because we learned from Nikki Giovanni and we had to move it. Uh, and we had over 300 people on the lawn. So, uh, and there, there's so many more that we've had. Uh, but the, the literary part in Clarksdale is something that we're, the story that we're really trying to tell. We've got two literary writers' trail markers now. We've got the Tennessee Williams Writers' Trail marker, which is so much of the Blues Trail. And we've got uh, Richard Fords. Uh, and we're pleased that Richard Ford's going to be coming back here for the Mississippi Delta Tennessee Women's Festival this year speaking uh, on Friday afternoon. Scott's going to speak on Friday morning. So uh, it, it should be a great a great festival, and I hope y'all will think about coming back to that and staying involved. So, and then the third and final thing I want to say, and then I'll sit down. Uh, I said that it's finally coming to fruition. I feel like that everything, all the people that have supported this place, prayed for it, uh, worked on it, and, you know, on and on and on. Uh, this past year, two big things happened for us. Um, one, um, we got an earmark from Congress through Senator Roger Wicker's office, and then uh, Senator, C Senator Cindy Hyde Smith obviously approved it since she's on the Appropriations Committee for $250,000 to run a, um, um, a writing lab program that will help support students at CCC. And the exciting thing about that is that uh, it's gonna actually finally, after almost 20 years of uh, working on this center, it's gonna help us develop real programming that I believe can uh, and hope will you know, be eternal, you know, that will stand the test of time uh, and become uh, more realistic because it will tie together the author lecture series that we've done, it will tie together uh, the Mississippi Delta Tennessee Williams Festival that, that we've been doing each year, and, um, and it will be an opportunity uh, to really explore the Delta, the culture, the history, everything that Scott was talking about earlier in his um, that he's been working on and is interested in in the Delta, I was like, okay, I think he read my notes. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, um, this is one of those things. And then the second thing, I said two, didn't I? The second thing, don't let me forget you, Jimmy and I. Uh, so we got the 250000 from Congress. Uh, and, and by the way, uh, some of you, at least some of you older folks, know Bill Luckett. He was very instrumental in helping with that. Um, not, he helped us make the connections, and a lot of times that's what it's all about, making the connections. And I'm sorry Bill's not here this year, um, you know, to see all that and hear this story, but I always want to make sure I give credit to the people who help us get where we are. And then the second thing uh, that happened this year that was just a, a, a gift, a gift from God, I've been asking and telling people for, for years that we need more air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Norman Brown Collins building, there's a large, huge gymnasium.
raise the amount back, then y'all, we can expand this next year because thanks to uh, Orlando Payton, our state representative, he helped us get 150000 from the state legislature to get HVAC put in that building. <laughs> much better not be stepping on each other. But I just want to thank everybody. That was really my point of my story today is to thank so many of you here in the room and this organization, Delta Directions, uh, for sticking with us, for coming every year, for doing your amazing work. And I hope that you'll continue to come here and do what you do and we'll be able to expand even more. So thank you. Yeah.